welcome to the MHR podcast. I'm Andy. I'm Alice. Alice, this week, um, I thought we could lean on something that we've actually... It's been in the news a lot, actually. There's a lot of legislation changes, so we've written about it at MHR. We've been releasing some content about it. I thought we could talk about it, make sure people are learning from what we're putting out there in the world. Absolutely. I'm sure I'm going to learn something today. Um, I know there's quite a few updates from... Um, what was it called at the end of October? The budget. The budget, the budget. thank you. It seems so long ago. We're really halfway through November already. <laughs> Just feel that, um, literally flying. But yeah, definitely, there's um, quite a few, I think, on the horizon, there, there will be changes. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that the blog that we're going to speak about today, it's kind of looking at what could be coming yeah. um, and what maybe we need to learn a little bit more on to be yeah. prepared for. So this week, we wanted to talk about pay transparency legislation. Do you know what that means? Do you know what? I, I think I've got limited knowledge on well, that Well, that's one. good. Yeah. You're in the right place. Hopefully other people listening also don't know, but want to know more, because that's what we're going to talk about. So I thought we could talk about what it is, uh, why it's been in the news a lot, so so much lately uh, and actually you know what it really means for businesses and the considerations they need to make. So um, let's start with the basics then. So pay transparency and yep. pay equity, very different things. Uh, shall I talk through what they are? Yes. Okay, yeah, let's so, start with that one. So to get us kind of, a, you know, a basis of understanding, pay equity is making sure that there's no discrimination, be it indirect. Direct. We've all done our discrimination training, right? Yep. Um, direct or indirect discrimination tra uh, uh, dis uh, pay in, well, there is no direct or indirect discrimination in your pay, all right? So everyone should ensure that they are paid equally uh, for, for equal work. That's, that's the whole point of that. Transparency, or pay transparency, is ensuring that employers are open about the pay. So note that this is not the same as posting salary information, job listings. Uh, rather, it involves disclosing pay details, reporting pay rates to the public through the gender pay gap reports and other kind of similar reporting methods. Right, so naturally, there's a bit of an overlap between the two concepts. So Obviously, yep. the equity is more about making sure you're paid equally. Transparency is about the fairness, but also actually publi uh, publishing what you're doing so you can better communicate wh why and how you're doing that. Um, so, for example, um, if you're transparent about your pay, um, uh, but it shows a lack of equity, then you're facing some risks um, and litigation for compliance. So okay. you have to be equal, but you yeah. also have to publish and be transparent. If the yeah. transparency shows that you're not, then you need to take some action. Yeah. Uh, however, many countries uh, in the EU, UK, mandate reporting on gender pay gaps. For instance, you can't just sweep poor pay under the rug. You need to be able to put. You need to be transparent on this. So, mm -hmm. taking a holistic approach where both factors are equally considered will help. Right. Uh, you need to be honest about the fact that maybe it's not equal here, but this is what we're going to do to work towards that. For example. Okay. So, so that, that is the difference. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Cool. So there is uh, changes to legislation coming up. So if you're in the UK, for example, uh, you need to look at the Equi um, Equality Act. Uh, this act means that people of all genders need to be given equal pay for doing the same job or job of e equivalent value, right? Yep. This also applies to other protected characteristics. We all know the characteristics, right? We talk about these a lot. So obviously yep. race, disability, sexual orientation, there's a lot of uh, protected characteristics. Um, so organization, organizations who employ more than 250 people uh, need to be very conscious of this. That's also a bit of a okay. threshold. If you operate in the EU, so the European yep. Union, you also need to stay uh, on top of what those legislation changes mean because uh, there's an EU directive in 2023, uh, 2023 907. This uh, directive aims to strengthen the existing transparency requirements. So uh, if you don't operate in the EU, you might end up uh, competing with EU employers and especially those in industries or remote digital people or uh, d d digital nomads or people who work for companies in different countries can source talent. So if you're not transparent and you're not equal, just because you don't operate in the EU doesn't mean that these EU, EU businesses aren't going to win all your recruitees, right? Yeah, yeah. So it is important. So does that, that link then? So like it seems like the UK, we've got obviously that Quality Act that's a protection for the mm -hmm. workforce um, and then I guess as well keeping businesses compliant. Yeah. And then actually if you are operating the EU, you need to make sure that you're keeping compliant with the yeah. extension of... Yeah. kind of the Equality Act at that point. And you also just need to stay competitive, right? Why would you work for 100%. someone who isn't showing equal, equal pay or kind of representation for the amount of work that you're doing, you know? Yeah, definitely. Or you'd be like, well, I'd work for them. Yeah, and I think it mentions there um, 
what you said about the remote workers and those kind of digital nomads, mm. they, I think, are kind of growing in numbers as well. Mm. So there's, like you say, if you're remaining competitive, there's a huge amount of talent. And I think that's yeah. a growing pool of talent um, that you could be capturing. So it sounds like there's quite a few reports that yeah. fall into this, yeah. um, which probably are the responsibility of HR, I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. Um, or maybe you've got a dedicated team if you're lucky enough. But 250 people in a business or more, um, you've got to be aware of, um, obviously keeping compliant with um, race, disability, sexual orientation, those sort yeah. of reports that we're having to pull, obviously, to um, put that, I guess, data more public mm -hmm. um, and showing that you are working towards a more equal uh, yeah. workplace. Yeah, it's 250 is a substantial size organization, right? It you've is, got quite yeah. a few people there. So you are making sure you're, you're uh, of a business of that size, you're, you're being accountable for how you're representing that workforce and how you're making sure they're paid equally and represented fairly. So there's a lot to be done there. I think all the more reason why people should be looking at, well, how are you capturing this information? How are you storing it? How are you making sure that you're getting a clear view of what your employees are doing, what they're getting, and yeah. what the work they're doing, and how that's split evenly? Because if you can't even, if you don't even have the technology to help provide you that information or business planning insight, how are you ever going to report on it? Yep. We've just got gone through the fact that it's actually, it, it's you need to report on it now. So you need to make sure that you have your employee data in one point and you've got a real clear view of that. Definitely. I think you pointed there a real clear view, but um, it would be beneficial or I guess valuable for businesses that is easy accessible. So you're not just pulling that data at the end of the year when you have to do the report yeah. actually it should be something that you're benchmarking against constantly yeah. throughout the year um because like i say you can't just be competitive at one point you've got to remain competitive yeah. throughout the whole year flex to the changes look at the economy and kind of see what if you're you and be, again if yeah. you're not doing that how much of a nightmare is that for your payroll team to do that once a year to collect all that information it's like well this should just be live you should be able to see this you should be able to see real-time pay information about all your employees uh, if you're obviously in the payroll the hr team and that you know you're pr trusted with that information. 100 yeah but yeah. so you can start automatically doing this you can also then make better business decisions because you know what pay is going when you, you can get a better sense of like how you're going to plan and build in new roles to make sure you're providing the right opportunities um, and equality across the businesses your business grows yeah and you can start predicting the value you can get and the roi from those roles because you've got the data about people's performance like all of this stuff adds up yeah. uh, but if you're doing it manually like a lot of businesses do they're like okay once a year we'll do our we're going to do a pay gap report and it's going to take us two months. We've got to take half the payroll team out of this process for a couple of weeks. It's going to be a bit laborious. We're just going to have to dig in and do it. Do it. I'm like, well, how's that fair around then? Like just having that data live is invaluable. Absolutely. So I think there's a few things to consider yeah. um, when we're talking about um, pay transparency mm. um, and especially in terms of that, like say preparing for that legislation change that might be coming um, or obviously making sure that you are compliant. So um, a couple of things to highlight to you to be considering. Um, so there is a duty um, in for job applicants that they do provide pay ranges mm. um, and that job titles are gender neutral. Um, so that's something to consider there. Um, there's also a duty for current employees. Um, yeah. So ensuring that your knowledge about pay progression is easy accessible. So um, whether that comes from the HR team, whether it's um, viewed from, um, you know, like I say, a dedicated team that does the comms, the compliance for the company, um, if you've got policies, where is that being stored? Is it easily accessible for all employees, whether you're in the office, online? Um, do you have a central hub? That's what we always say, that key information like that should be on a central hub. So how easily accessible do employees, are they logging in to that central hub? Um, that's another metric you probably could be looking at is making sure that employees are engaging with that platform um, and accessing the information that they do need. Um, reporting requirements. So there is a duty to report on gender pay gap, which we've mentioned, um, and gender composition data to the relevant state governments. So, um, of course, if you're a business owner, you'll be very aware of that. But if you work in HR, you'll also be very aware of that. Um, and then finally, with pay equity, um, there is kind of ensuring that any gender pay differences um, and whether they can't be justified by an objective criteria, but it's making sure that that gap is lower than 5%. So there will, you know, the world that it is, there are changes and that sometimes things do fall behind, but it's just making sure that if you have that gap, that it is lower than 5% um, and that there is, I think, what our blog is trying to say is that there is objectives to make sure that we are progressing in a positive way to um, pay transparency and having that equity. So, we, and 
and the, the, and that's really important to make sure that you well for a number of reasons but we talked a bit about the impact what that means obviously it's going to if you're doing this wrong you have to do this if you're doing it wrong you're going to really bleed a lot of time and resource from people um, and make that a burden and as a result you're not going to get a clear view but there's a lot of other impacts so like obviously say this urgency comes from the fact that you could find you know find teams liable for fines if you're not doing this properly right um, unexpected back pay <laughs> that's oh, right, a shock yep. so if you're like okay actually you haven't been fair you've been transparent and we found that it's not been equal we need to correct that suddenly you know you've, you've got some back pay to sort out um Obviously, if you're not compliant, that's going to come with some punishment there Absolutely, as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's before you get into any reputational damage. People yeah. are behind this now. Look, this is a bigger conversation than it was maybe 10 years ago. People want to know that we are pe organizations are being fair and treat pe pe treating people equi uh, e equally. If you're publishing that information, it's very clear that you're not. Your brand is going to be damaged. Your business is going to be damaged. And you're going to lose the respect of people who may want to work for you or be... Uh, in collaboration or relationship with you as a business. Absolutely. And we're talking about long-term damage there, yeah. aren't we? Um, so like you say, everything that builds up, so like you say, the fines, the back pay, you know, any li little things like that that might be a financial impact, it's the reputational damage that I think yeah. really hits the kind of the sustainability or longevity yeah. of, of your business for the future. Um, but there are some benefits for um, employers and yeah. um, employees. Um, so... In terms of, I guess, looking at pay transparency um, for employees, um, yourself, it will be your perspective perspective of your organization yeah. so you're looking at well if you know that you're being fairly paid if you know that they are being transparent about pay um that you're more likely to be satisfied at work because there is that um trust yeah. built with with your business um and with being treated fairly that creates more positive culture so people are more likely to I think to um dedicate time and energy into their work into their day-to-day -day, um, because they want to see the business grow and they want to um, see it perform um, and then on that point of performance um, we all know that um, positive workforce and having um, people engaged it does boost performance um, and obviously that contributes to the profits and survival of your business so it does all kind of tumble into one doesn't it it's yeah. like a snowball effect so changes are happening uh, we need to make sure ahead yeah. of them so um, it will change between government, uh, governments in terms of how this is going to kind of land, but uh, the drive towards pay equity is not likely to go away. It's going to happen. You need to get on board with it, right? So um, in the UK, for example, government has said, you know, um, th th they're kind of trying to slow down this conversation to plan to make work pay, which would kind of protect the right for equal pay for disabled people and people from minority ethnic groups. Now, this would likely involve mandatory uh, reporting and, and eth uh, ethnicity um, uh, for disabled pay, uh, pay gaps, similar to how gender pay gap is currently handled. So there's support okay. there. It's is happening. We're pushing forwards. We're moving ahead. Um, if you have no obvious compliance goal to aim for ahead of getting uh, ahead of the curve, um, take a look at your pay structures and see if you can spot any concerns. You could also consider equal pay analysis or other, other analytical techniques. But again, this is like things like, I don't know, we talk about it so we're blue in the face, but what people first can do with your live employee data, your live paid information, you can start to get a really good accurate report of kind of how people are being paid uh, in line to what they're working, how they're working, when they're working, and you can really start to make an accurate live um, assessment on kind of how people are being paid and how your financial well-being is looked after, but also how you're going to report on what you're doing with your pay. Very key point. I think that's a good one, um, good point to end on, actually, because I think it leaves um, any listeners something yeah. to go to go back on um, yeah. and to think about. Because, um, like I say, you'll it will probably if you're involved in in that area of the business, it'll be you know on your horizon that you'll be thinking about, you'll be keeping track of. Um, but you know, think about the ground workings, basically. You know, yeah. what is it that you've got in place to make sure that you are compliant, that you're able to fulfil these reports, and essentially that you've got the data where you need it. Yeah. I mean, there's loads we could talk about, right? This, 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 the, to be fair, the blog that we've got here on our website, which is available on our knowledge hub, goes into great depth of it. It explains it probably much better than we could. Certainly much better than I could. And me, yeah. Um, 
but uh, it is worth checking out. Uh, of course, we're always here from MHR to give you a legislation update and give you all of the know, because we're very proud to be ahead of the curve on that. Yep. Um, so if you need to find out more, just go to mhrglobal.com, go to our Knowledge Hub. You'll see a lot in regards to legislation and compliance, as well as all things HR, payroll, finance, analytics, learning, all of the stuff that we do. So uh, there is a blog uh, about pay transparency legislation. Give it a read. It's just very helpful to have. Uh, otherwise, if you have any other questions, you want to know about all the things that we can do, just get in touch. Uh, we'd love to hear from you as well, because if there's any questions you have, we'll talk about it here. We'll hopefully try and answer those. Definitely. Lovely. Brilliant. Well, join us next week and we'll be talking about something else completely different, I imagine. I think we might have a guest next week. We probably do have a guest I think next I've week, heard but rumors. you can find out about that later. <laughs> Until then, see you later. See you. Bye.